Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with uh, some cables underneath my feet. Coming at you with 2021 Panini Mosaic Baseball, brand new release, just came out yesterday. This is a full case, 12 box, pick your team number two with a free box giveaway at the end if you bought at least an even number of teams. So big thanks to, here's the full case here. And this is going to bring us right to the end of the night, but this personal box is still available on Instagram Live, at Jaspies Rakes. So here on the 21st, thanks everybody for getting into the action. If you have a little rooftop next to your name like Chris, that means you won that team in a filler. So we did that randomizer. In fact, that filler gave you two teams. If you bought one spot, you get two teams. So everyone in the filler is automatically has an entry for the, uh, for the promo. All right, let's pop this baby open right here. Oh. All right, let's go. Rex, Joe, do you notice how much your sport is baseball, but you do better jumping in randomly to football and basketball? Is that, is that true? I, I want to say, like, I feel like you don't care as much about, like, I don't know. I feel like you care, you don't care as much about football and basketball. So I think you're always pleasantly surprised when you get like a nice hit or two. Whereas baseball, you're like actively hunting or searching for something. And so the bar is set a little bit higher? Or is it monetarily you actually do, or does it actually work out better actually monetarily? Yeah, that was pretty nice. That was a pretty nice hit, Joe. Um, I, I don't think, Joe Locus, we don't really expect, at least I don't, it's hard to pull super fractors. So, congrats. Hmm. Well, Rex. I mean, everything, generally, I'd like to think that a lot of this sort of stuff, these group breaks, they run in cycles. So, hey, keep stay on, the, stay on the football basketball train until you get cold there, and then flip back over to baseball. All right, so settle in, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably going to take about an hour, which is going to bring us right to the end of the night. If you're watching the replay, I will be posting a, uh, or not posting, but at the end of the video, they'll be, you can fast forward through it. I will do an autograph recap. But just in the interest of time, we're gonna kind of breeze through these. I'm gonna set aside some of these like rookie parallels, like the Alec Baum. And, uh, but all card ships. So if, you, if I accidentally miss like a variation or something else, you know, don't worry, everything's going to ship. Like this Chris Bubich will definitely ship because it's an autograph. Rookie autographs for the Royals. Joe Locus on the board. Right, that was a random team break too, wasn't it? Hey, that's the, that's the beauty of the hobby, Joe. You know, I mean, you've, you've been doing breaks with us long enough to know You've been on the other side, you know, where you're not getting hits and, you know, you're joining all these breaks and you're not really getting much back, if anything at all. But you kept your ABs going, you kept your at bats in, and it worked out. It worked out this time. Isaac Paredes. But that's the fun of all this. That's the beauty of these group breaks. It's the thrill of the chase. I think at the end of the day, Travis with the Tigers, by the way. It's the thrill of the chase that makes this fun. So a lot of people are like, oh, I could just buy a box of this myself. Yeah, go for it. At Jaspies Breaks on Instagram Live, we sell boxes of these for personals. If that's how you want to do it, that's great. We'll give you that option on Instagram Live, at Jaspies Breaks. But I think there's enough people that like the, that like the, 
uh, we don't like to use this word a lot, but like the gambling aspect of it, the thrill of the chase is what we call it, you know? That's what you want to do. There's Keeper Ruiz, silver for Coppola and my Dodgers. Big win for them today. There's Trent Grisham, Padres, Abram. So I think, you know, th there's, there's still a space for people who want to do group breaks and you can get a team and be part of an entire case instead of going like a box at a time or something like that. The thrill of the chase, you know, makes it a, makes it a lot more fun. Redemption. But I say, yeah, Joe, as, like I said, it's still fun for you as long as you're having fun. That's, that's the whole thing. A lot of people, you know, I don't know. There are some people who are just like living and dying with like every $20 order or something like that. If that's, if that's not fun, you know. But as long as you're enjoying yourself, hey, then maybe, maybe some nice hits will, will, will tumble your way. There's Lucas Giolito. That's 11 out of 25 on that Lucas Giolito for the White Sox. Shane. All right. Nice first box. Redemption. We saw a lot of this one player on Redemptions. It's not that person. This one's Keeper Ruiz. Nice. Rookie autographs mosaic. The Dodgers catching prospect, who's now with the Nationals, but this will still go to the Dodgers. And this checklist is still a Dodgers edition. But congrats to uh, Grizzlebees, Ike Apollo with that. A big part of that uh, Scherzer Trey Turner deal in game five, an elimination game for my Dodgers. Trey Turner. And the rest stepped up, and then we'll see Max Scherzer, I think, tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, but it's a travel day tomorrow, but on uh, Saturday. Ooh, it's, is that Triple Threads on the calendar, Rex? Yeah, save up for that. Yeah, there's a lot of different layers and strategies, ladies and gentlemen, in group breaks. I think once you kind of, you know, if you're new to group breaks, I'll guarantee you the first six months to a year, especially if you stick around that long, you're gonna spend a lot of money, you know? Some of it's, some of it you're gonna look back on and be like, oh, that was a waste, and some of it's gonna be like, that was awesome. But after about six months or so, maybe even a year, um, once you kind of go through a year of, a whole year of sports, you know, I think you'll start to recognize what you like and what you don't like and, and all that sort of stuff. So then you can start, and Rex, like people like Rex has been here long enough where you're like, hey, I'm gonna save my money for product XYZ, which is smart because if there's a particular product that you like and you're familiar with and you kind of have a feel for the product so you know what teams are gonna hit and when teams are and you kind of know what the rhythm of a product is, just save up for that. You know, you, it's most it's not sustainable to buy into every single product that's released. And very few people can actually do that. You know, but if there's a handful of products that you, that you that you like every year because you've gone through a whole year of products and you're like, okay, that stuff I like, that stuff I didn't like, that stuff sold well in the secondary market, that did not, blah, 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 blah. You'll kind of be able to figure out, pick and choose which ones you like. And then get into the odd mixer here and there at Jaspies. Chris Bryant, stained glass. I think these, I feel like in football, they were not short printed. Basketball, mosaic basketball, they were short printed. And I think baseball, they are short printed. But anyway, I haven't seen a lot too much of those. Actually, I don't think I saw a single one in the first case that I did, Pick Your Team 1. So there you go, Cubbies. All right, so we've got a couple things here. We've got Kohei Arihara, 48 out of 99 for the Rangers. That's for Patrick Davis. The Jared Kalanick mosaic pattern is going to be for Seattle, Chris Butler with the M's. Yeah, Jason Asher, the chase worked out for you. Jason Asher uh, got into some some fillers and won himself two seven hundred and fifty dollars spots in that division break. Another redemption.
Any guesses on that redemption for bragging rights? A lot of times it's been this guy. <laughs> There's Akil Badu for Travis and the Tigers. A little cat team mojo. By the way, did I say it was Matt Lieber who had the Chicago Cubs? He got the Chris Bryant stained glass. There's Miguel Cabrera, Miggy, 12 out of 25. I really like the, uh, the white mosaic parallel. It really pops. That's for Travis and the Tigers. Yeah, Mark Delara is saying, hey, listen, if you're into collecting cards of, a, of your team, yeah, do breaks or invest on a specific card that you want rather than just buying hobby boxes outright. Exactly. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, nice Shane McClanahan, by the way, rookie auto for, for James. There's no right or wrong way to collect. I think there'll be a lot of other, other communities and a lot of other breakers or collectors or people out there who will tell you there is a right, right or wrong way to collect. In my opinion, there is not. Just do what you like as long as you're having fun with it. Stay within whatever your disposable income is as long as you're having fun. Nolan Arenado, Autographs Mosaic. That's got to be, that has to be Cardinals edition, right? I should, I should have had a checklist up. Oh, actually, I think I copied and pasted the checklist here. Here's the checklist we're using, groupbreakchecklist.com. Just drop the link into the chat. Nolan Arenado is indeed a Cardinal. I was like, he's been far enough removed from, the, uh, from his Rockies days. This will go to Sean Maddock and St. Louis with a spot that he won. And a free top loader, Sean. I was a little, any Cardinals fans out there? Yeah, Steve likes the idea of just case breaks. The thing about case breaks is usually we're, we're doing Lar a larger grouping of boxes. That's the that's the advantage here. Uh, any St. Louis Cardinals fans? What what happened with Mike Schilt? Why was he let go? I feel like he was a great soldier for the Cardinals organization. I think he worked his way up from like scout to to management and all that sort of stuff. Like. I know the company line from the Cardinals was it was just philosophical differences, but was there anything else that came out of it? I thought I heard something where there was a disagreement on there was a disagreement on um, coaches, like assistant coaches. Like I think maybe the organization wanted to make changes there, and he did not. But I don't know. Are you, I don't know what kind of person he is. I don't know him personally, but is he the kind of guy that was gonna fall on, fall on the sword just to keep his own assistance there? I feel like if, if ownership of a baseball team said to me, listen, Joe, we, we wanna keep you, but we gotta change your, your, your batting coaches and your pitch, we're, we're gonna make changes there, is that okay? I'd put up a fight, but if it was my job, I'd be like, I don't know, I'm sure he'll get a job somewhere pretty quickly, but just thought that was odd, especially for someone who had been with the organization for a long time. There's Trevor Rogers, rookie autograph for the fish. That's gonna to go to Patrick Davis, picked up the Marlins straight up. Um, Mets need a manager, right? Eh? Padres need a manager, right? There is Tucker Davidson for the ATL. Chris Butler with the Braves. Won the Braves in that filler.
Dodgers finally putting some runs on the board against Max Freed. Max Freed went to a high school. I'm sure everyone heard that on the broadcast, but Max Freed went to a high school. And I don't know if these, these, these three pitchers played there at the same time. I think one of them might have been a freshman when one was a senior or something like that. But listen to this rotation. Max Freed, Lucas Giolito, Jack Flaherty. All went to the same high school around the same time. Can you imagine that that high school rotation there? I wonder if if Max Fried said I think on the broadcast said that he that he had to he had like sixty tickets set aside for you know for friends and family. So I wonder if that was a distraction for him. I, I'm sure it wouldn't be. I'm sure he had someone do it for him. But um. Zach Gallon seven out of ten. What did you hear about Urias and Lux? Oh, well, there was a shallow fly ball to center field that that um, Gavin Lux could have like dove for, I guess, but didn't, and the ball dropped in front of him, and Urias kind of kind of was like kind of flapped his arms and was like ah, oh, you know, and was just showing a little frustration, but another redemption. I like that Bobby Dalbeck too. Carl of the Red Sox, but I think that was just a little frustration. I think uh, just in the heat of the moment is what seems to be the issue. Urias is a, kind of a pretty quiet sort of dude, so I don't think he'd show up someone like that. And there's Jorge Mateo, rookie autographs mosaic, who I think is a Yankee, Padre. That's going to go to strong coast, way off. Abram. But if it was any other center fielder, I think, I think a diving play would have happened, but I think he's played in center field less than, less than like 20 games, I think. So, so I think it was kind of a little bit of a hard ask. All right, next box for him to make those kind of plays. Let's see, one of my favorite Websites is uh, MLBTradeRumors.com. I feel like they they have good, they've got some good writers that sort of aggregate a lot of uh, information. And um, Yankees sign Aaron Boone to a three-year deal. Billy Bean withdraws name from consideration for Mets job. MLB to require teams to provide housing for minor leaguers. Yeah, that's been I don't know if people have been tracking that story, but it's pretty crazy. Um, what else has been happening? Oh, Rex, your Cubs have a GM. That's right, I saw that too. Carter Hawkins is your GM now. The qualifying offer is set at $18.4 million. What was it last year, 17 something, 17? Just under, just under 18, I think. All right, next box. There's Andy Young for Patrick Davis and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I, I agree, Rex. I think it is tough to to not show your emotions on the field. I mean, there is a lot of, I mean, I know these guys are making a lot of money a lot of a lot of a lot of pressure on them too There's Dalton Jeffries Your second of three autographs from the box that goes to Matt Lieber and the Oakland A's 
Wonder what made them do minor league housing because minor leaguers have been treated terribly. There's only so many first rounders, right? Think about it. There's only so many people that are in the first three rounds that are making, that are like bonus babies, that are getting like, you know, million dollar signing bonuses or more. There's Luis Castillo to 99. Most dudes are not making that at all. And so, so it's hard to, it's hard for like some kid who's like a fifth round pick who maybe gets a $50,000 signing bonus, right? But that really doesn't go a long way when you're looking at nutrition, getting housing, all that sort of stuff, especially kids who are out of high school living life for the first time, trying to figure out all this and then being able to say, hey, you know, trying to find apartments that are like three to six month leases because they're not living in like this random town for like the entire year because the baseball season is only like what five six months long then they move around a lot they get called up they get released they get sent down there's Luis Gonzalez White Sox Shane Warner so now go to the next random town try to get like a not signing a year lease at a place you gotta try to find like other places like I mean it's a whole deal I mean you got like minor league baseball players who are who are supposed to be professional athletes who are like eating McDonald's and living like eight to a three bedroom apartment and, and all that sort of stuff so like More than any other sport, baseball is, is, is a sport that I understand where, where if you grind through the minors like most players have to, like I don't blame them for trying to get as much money as possible in free agency. There's Anderson Teada at 49. That's for the Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> McDonald's is expensive now too. This is why all of a sudden, I don't think it's all of a sudden, I think all season long there's been a story after story in various publications about just people tracking like, like the, the destitute lives of like minor leaguers. So I think, I think that has really shed a light, a lot, a lot of different stories have shed a light on, on their plight and I think that that's moved Major League Baseball to make moves like that. That I don't know. I don't know if that's related, Rex. Them cutting minor league teams. I think that was just. I mean, baseball teams can afford it. <laughs> they just choose not to. But my, I mean, minor leaguers will tell you all the time what the what the best organizations are. Some minor leaguers will tell you, yeah, I, I was in this organization. And we had every minor league at every level from, from rookie ball to triple A. There were like trainers and nutritionists and they took care of you and fed you and all that sort of stuff. Even if you were, you know, even if you were like a seventh round pick and a third string first baseman in rookie ball, you know, like you would get taken care of. You. And some organizations where you wouldn't, where you wouldn't get taken care of. Every baseball team, even the poorest, quote unquote, poorest baseball team, every own owner can take care of their entire staff. Don't worry. A lot of these, a lot of these rich people will cry poor when these organizations actually aren't. There's Al Kaline to 49.
And we've got Garrett Crochet, rookie autographs for the Shy Sox. Shane for the Chicago White Sox. like a train whistle hit here. I don't think I've seen. There's Brady Singer, Kansas City Joe Locus with the Royals. Another Bobby Dalbeck mosaic pattern. So what's what I think the Red Sox game is tomorrow, right? Who does Evan have in tomorrow's Red Sox game? We've got uh, Nate Ivaldi on the mound versus Luis Garcia. I think Luis Garcia kind of got hammered in his first appearance, but it's back in. Uh, there's Zach McKinstry for my Dodgers. It's back in Houston, Boston in Houston for the next, or for at least one game. Possibly two if the Red Sox can win this one, take it to game seven. Zach McKinstry for my daughters, Coppola. It's Cody Bellinger here too. He's striking the ball pretty well these days. Seems like he's getting healthier and healthier. So there are your three autos right here. Next box. I'd like to see a Game 7. Those are always pretty exciting. So what happened in this ALCS? So the Astros won the first one, 5-4. And the Red Sox, this is in Houston. And the Red Sox beat the Astros 9-5 in Game 2. And then, first game in Boston, everyone was going out of control. Their Red Sox beat the Astros 12-3. They were up 2-1 on the series, and they were in Boston, and everyone was dancing in the streets. And then, and then that fateful like late inning fiasco happened in game four. Astros won 9-2. And then in the final game in Boston, Astros took the lead on the series by beating the Red Sox 9-1. That was more of a comfortable win, not a late one. But from now, now they're in Boston, or now they're in Houston. It's going to be a tough one. But Nate, Nate Uvalde's been pitching really well for the most part. Nate Uvalde, former Dodger. Yeah, he was, he was, a, he was in the 2008 draft. Round 11, 337th pick overall, and now he's pitching for the Red Sox in an ALCS. Good for him. Francisco Lindor to 99. Ryan Mountcastle could be could be one of the big names in that Orioles rebuild. We need to figure out pitching though for the Orioles.
And there's William Contreras. <laughs> Was it five years ago today? The Cubs bested the Dodgers to go to the World Series? You know, after that series, I remember telling myself, or maybe even on air, that I just thought the Cubs and the Dodgers would see each other in the playoffs regularly after that. This is Luis Garcia. These red perils are not numbered, but of course all cards should. And then we've got Devin Williams. Autograph for the Brewers. Coppola with the Brew Crew. Was this the guy that punched a wall in celebration and broke his hand? His pitching hand? Or is it someone, some other guy on the Brewers? Got Trent Grisham for the Padre. 25 out of 49. And we've got a Keegan Aiken. If the, if the Orioles can develop some pitching, they've got some hitting. This could, this could be an interesting team. So there's our three autographs. Let's see if we can find some numbered parallels here. There's Arenado. There's Kyle Lewis. Casey Mize had a nice season. Casey, the Tigers too. They've got they've got Casey Mize, a former number one overall pick. They've got Spencer Torkelson, who should be called up in a in a season or two, if not sooner. We've got some other other guys there as well. Your Riley Greens and your the Keel Badoos and your Daz Camerons of the world and whatnot. Put together an interesting team. This has been a slow first half. We're all I well, we are halfway through. I've only done one case. Pick your team one. This seems to be in line with uh thinks this seems to be in line with what we saw in Pick Your Team One. No, numbered stuff is fewer and far between this year. Let's look at the checklist here. So the base checklist, silver prism, base mosaic, blue camo, that's choice. I think these, some of these are choice breaks, but there's blue out of 99. That's, that's some different pop. Purple's out of 49. I think orange fluorescent is, a, is a, in a different retail, but we got white out of 25 here. And then we should have some lower numbered stuff. There is goals to 10. And then maybe the one of ones. But yeah, I think most of these are, are really just the non-numbered parallels that were done. And you can probably tell like stuff like, yeah, like stuff like silver rookie parallels are fewer and far between. I kind of like that though, because because it's not just just a whole slew of numbered cards, you know? So that makes like the rookie like silver is a little more valuable for the top names. Like a Joe Adele, Joe Locus. I know we saw some base Joe Adele's, but we have not seen the parallels yet. Like a Ryan Mountcastle red. I think there's only three red per box. It's a little more common. There he is. There he is again. Two redemptions. Max Muncy, definitely missing him this postseason. 
And there's Aaron Nola to 99. Alec Baum Silver, his teammate. Right, Rex, who would have thought if you told me in 2016 that like five years later that Bryant, Schwarber, Baez, and Rizzo would all be off the team, that I'd, I'd say that's crazy talk. Matt Lieber with the Phillies, won the Phillies in that team random. We'll get those two parallels. And there's a Will Crow. Caw, caw. Sherry with the Pirates. Yeah, one of one would be pretty nice. There's the uh, white parallel, 10 out of 25 for Lewin Diaz. It's for the fish, it's gonna go to Patrick. First redemption is going to be Alec Baum for the Phillies. Nice. Rookie autographs mosaic pattern. So that will be for uh, Matt Lieber. And a free top loader too, Matt. Man, giving all, giving all away all sorts of free top loaders here. All right, next one is Daz Cameron. We're just talking about him. Tigers. That'll be for Travis. Little cat team mojo. Big cat. Uh, we looked this up yesterday. This is, uh, this is uh, Mike Cameron's son. Some of you may remember Mike Cameron. I remember him as a mariner. You know, I don't think I saw one in um, in break one, in pick your team one, but we did pull one in this case, Steve. It was uh, Chris Bryant. I went to Matt. I think those are pretty short printed. So looking at the box, here's what you're looking for. You're looking for the, I haven't seen overdrive either. We're looking for stained glass, overdrive, and more. Five silver prism and 15 mosaic parallels, but not a lot of the numbered cards seem to be fewer and far between. All right, next. And I think it looks like from judging from the checklist, it looks like there's going to be a few different mosaics out there. So this is like the hobby edition with three autographs in each box. There's a first off the line edition out there that has uh, also three autographs a box, but mosaic green swirl and pink swirl parallels are your short prints or your, uh, your I guess, per box parallels. And then there's a quick pitch box, which is a lot like, a lot like the basketball fast break for the Football no huddle. And that has different parallels too. And and I think there's in that choice version you have chances at other different parallels like the peacock short prints and different fusion parallels. Jonathan India, that might be your NL Rookie of the Year, Jonathan India. Fernando Tatis Jr. 
33 out of 99. For the Padres, Abram with the Friars. There's the Joe Adele mosaic. That's pretty nice. One of the one of the bigger prospects, just not only for the Angels, but I think in all of baseball. Hmm, looks like it's miscut a little bit here, which is unfortunate, Joe. There is Jared Oliva, Pirates, Sherry, with the Buckos. There's another Joe Adele. That's, so I think that's the way it's supposed to be cut, right? There were a few of these, these base ones, though. Maybe we'll find something even better than that. There's Tanner Hawk for Carl and the Red Sox. I think he's been getting some innings in the playoffs. There you go, Carl. There's Spencer Howard for the Phillies, Matt Lieber, rookie autograph. I feel like the Phillies are on the cusp of putting it all together, no? Four boxes to go. So I'm looking at their their depth chart on ESPN.com. Finishing a sort of pedestrian, 82 and 80. Although they had like a month where they they were looking like they were going to sneak into that wild card spot. But I mean, Zach Wheeler had a great season. Aaron Nola had a great season. And then they got JT Real Muto, Alec Baum, Gene Segura, Didi Gregorius. Bryce Harper. I mean, they got some names on that team. Whoa. Maybe they just need to add a few more pieces. Some pitching, maybe. I don't know. I feel like I feel like something's got to happen there. I feel like maybe maybe it's time for for Mickey Moniac to shine. Something like that. I think, uh, I think the Marlins could be kind of scary at some point in the next couple of years. They've got they've got a really good starting pitching staff. They got Sandy Alcantara, Trevor Rogers, Pablo Lopez. Um, I'm not too familiar with Alicia Hernandez, but they got Jesus Lazardo from the A's. Then they've got a lot of young guys we're seeing in these sets, right? Luan Diaz, Jazz Chisholm. You know, I don't know if they're offenses, but they've got a couple of young players, but an excellent, and then you got Sixto Sanchez too. Um, they've got a really great starting rotation. And if they can get some hitting going, 
They might have to develop it, but if they can get like some hitting going, I think that could be really interesting. Trevor Rogers right there. I think he won I think he won rookie of the month the first two months of the season. I think a lot of the rookie hitters were a little quiet, but he was doing really well. There's Brandon Crawford. What a season he had. 44 out of 49. Matt Lieber with the Giants, my rivals. Speaking of Pablo Lopez, there he is. I mean, I know that pitchers on the secondary market don't tend to go too crazy, but they've got a really strong starting rotation. It's Jonathan Stiver. For the White Sox, that'll be for Shane. Jared Kalnick, red. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. If I'm the, if what would I do if I'm the Marlins? I would, uh, I would just kind of, I would just spend another year just developing. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're quite at. Let's go get some free agents level just yet. You know. You could do that, and then you end up committing a ton of money to some players that that are, you know, getting in the way of someone's development. But there's another Alec Baum rookie autographs mosaic, another one for the Phillies. I don't know what would, what would you do if you're the you're the Marlins, maybe I think Jazz Chisholm and Lewin Diaz play like middle infield positions. So maybe you look for some corner. Is Brian Anderson still out there? Maybe you sign a guy like Brandon Belt. You know, maybe you get a guy like uh, get a Kyle Seeger down in Florida for a couple of years or something like that. All right, three boxes to go. Nine autographs to go. Speaking of Kyle Seeger, I think it'll be interesting to see what the uh, what the Mariners are going to do. The Mariners looked like they were ahead of schedule. Almost slipped into a playoff spot this year. They've got money coming off the books, but they've got guys like, I don't know, like, I think Evan White was a rookie, right? Or maybe Evan White's not, but they had some players. You know, obviously Kyle Lewis is really good. They've got him under, like, team control for a while. You know, you have guys like Taylor Trammell and... Julio Rodriguez and pitchers like Logan Gilbert and guys like that coming up the coming up the ranks. I think they got some they've got like Kyle Seeger's contract coming off the books and everybody's like either you know, they're arbitration eligible or whatever. Their payroll is going to be, the payroll is pretty under $75 million this year. And they've got almost half of that coming off the books. Or half that, I mean, some of that was going to come back in arbitration and stuff like that. But 
But they've got money to play with if they feel like, hey, now we're just a few, a few hitters away. I think some of our Mariners fans here want, want like a Marcus Simeon type to be out there. All right, see you, Josh. Yeah, yeah, no worries, man. Go Dodgers. Absolutely. Saturday, baby. Chris Bubich, rookie autographs, Royals, Joe Locus. Thank you for the Mariners. You try to... Uh... You go after Corey Seager and tell him that they'll re-sign his brother for for a discount. I don't think you're going to try to pay Kyle Seager $18 million a year. But if you can get him at a discount, get him out there, could be interesting. There's Zach McKinstry on the left side there. Well, there are a lot of names that, that, that the Mariners could add to that lineup. There's a uh, Zach McKinstry, Dodgers, Psychopola. I think they do. I mean, I don't think they've made the playoffs. I mean, I'm sure there's. I don't know. Do they? <laughs> Drew's asking, do the Mariners have the one of the biggest drafts for not making the playoffs out of all the major sports? They're up there. Dominic Smith, 92 out of 99. I think um, last time they were there was like early. Late 90s, early 2000s. And then not even, not even, nothing since then, I want to say. Yeah, it's like 2001, Drew is saying. There's Adonis Medina for the Phillies. Another one for Matt. Peace. I already locked that room. So okay. You're, you're good. Uh, thank you. Yeah. No Appreciate it. Good night. See you, Josh. Yeah, I'll see you again, Thanks. Uh -huh. I have one more autograph. Don't, no? Ryan Zimmerman to 49. Oh, no, I think Chris Bubich was the first autograph, right, of the three? I don't know. We'll do a recap at the end. And I think Zimmerman retired, right? I think he, he was the first pick for the Nationals. And he stayed with the Nationals his entire career. I don't know. I'd have to look at the uh, the Mariners team uh, a little more carefully, but but I think I mean if they could add like a Marcus Sim Simeon, Corey Seager, maybe Corey Seager would ask too many years, but they can get Marcus Simeon for like four or five years, right? That would be a great addition to that team. Chris Taylor's a free agent. They used to be a Mariner. Chris Taylor would be great on that team. I'm not sure if they're in the the Carlos Correa or. Chris Bryant sweepstakes. I'm sure they wouldn't mind someone like Chris Bryant up there. Seems like Chris Bryant's going to go back with the Giants, so he's, he fit really well there. I don't know. There's some things that they can do in free agency. Add a, They don't have to go crazy, but add a couple pieces and then, um, and then wait for their young talent to kind of grow around that. Um, they need starting pitching, too. I mean, they got some starting pitching, but they could they could add they could add a little bit more. I heard that Mark Mark Delara saying Alec Baldwin just killed some. I think it was hours ago, but yeah, on set of a western. I got an alert about that earlier today. Using a prop gun that apparently had a projectile in it, and maybe 
and I think injured the director and possibly killed the director of photography or something like that. That's that's gotta be that's gotta be what someone someone's getting fired, right? The prop guy. Unless it was murder most foul, but that's crazy. There's Josh Fleming, rookie autographs. It's flooding your Facebook feed right now, says Mark. What's the, uh, I'm sure there's, uh, are there crazy conspiracies already floating around? There's got to be, right? This is 2021, there has to be. It's Joey Bard. Do you think the Dodgers will keep Chris Taylor let him go? I don't know. The Dodgers, Drew, have a lot of question marks that they have to, they have to figure out. Um, one of my favorite sites, Drew and baseball fans, uh, is Cots Contracts on Baseball Perspectives. That'll kind of give you a breakdown of all these all these deals. And the Dodgers, I know their payroll is already kind of big, but they actually have a lot of money coming off the books. So, not that they're paying all of Scherzer's contract, but Scherzer's going to be a free agent. I don't think the Dodgers are paying all of David Price's contract either. I mean, Trevor Bauer's situation's up in the air. Kershaw's a free agent. His $31 million is off the book. Books. You know, do they re-sign Albert Pujols? That's sort of like that veteran Jim Tomei type player that they used to have. How much would Kershaw be if you were signing re-sign like 25 or 20 still? He's making 31 now annually. He won't get 30 again, will he? No, I don't. I mean, the 20 just, it's not realistic. They'd probably give him, I'd give him like two years, 20 to say, yeah. come back, retire a Dodger or something like that. And like Scherzer, what is he worth? Because he's, he's a little old too, but he's still pretty really good. I mean, 25 million and like you give him... Bowers contract, $31 million a year and yeah, so for two or three years. Like he gets convicted and shit? I think so. They could somehow void that contract and avoid paying paying him, but they got to figure that out too. Is that money on the books for the Dodgers or is it not? So that's a big decision. But Kenley Jansen's $20 million is off the book books. I don't, I don't know. Kenley's been looking really good though. I think he's made the mechanics changes, mechanical changes with his windup. Um, to make him pretty lights out again, so I don't know. Yeah, price is kind of washed, but I think they're not paying that contract. I think Boston's paying like three quarters of that contract anyway, so I think they're just gonna, he's a free agent after 2022, I think, so I think they're just getting whatever prorated deal they have for him and and then just let him just gobble up some innings every once in a while, see if they could get anything from him or out of him. Um. So Bauer's a question mark. Kenley's $20 million is off the books. Bellinger will go into arbitration. Corey Seager's a free agent. Trey Turner's still arbitration eligible, although I don't know what's going to happen there. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Chris Taylor's $8 million is off the books. Corey Knebel's $5 million is off the books. Um, so on and so forth. So they've got some, they've got some decisions they have to make. And I don't know what's going to happen. There's Christian Javier. Guys like, you know, guys like Justin Turner aren't getting any younger. So that's an issue. Christian Javier for the Strohs. Sean Maddock with the Astros. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I would think that they would re-sign Chris Taylor because they actually let they let Kike Hernandez go because Chris Taylor pretty much filled, there were like two Kike Hernandezes, you know what I mean? So they had to pick Chris Taylor or Kike. They, they were both kind of the same player, occupying the same sort of space with the similar kinds of versatility. I think they're both right-handed too, I think. So so I, I, I think that's why they they had they picked one, you know, essentially. So my guess would be that they would re-sign Chris Taylor. You know, unless it's someone going to really throw like someone going to throw big money at Chris Taylor. He's making seven point eight. 
he signed a two-year 13 deal, right? He was an all-star for the first time this year. So I would, you would think that there may be like $12 million a year, three or four years, three years, $36 million, something like that. Three years, $45 million. Yeah, well, Trey Turner's arbitration, but I think if I think the Dodgers will make an offer to Corey Seager, they have to. I don't know if they're going to win the Corey Seager sweepstakes, but I think the second they the second they don't get out of that Corey Seager sweepstakes, I think they're giving Trey Turner an extension. Or I don't know, maybe if they don't think they're going to win the Trey Turner or the Corey Seager sweepstakes, maybe they just say screw the arbitration year, Trey Turner. Let's give you the extension and lock you up for the next five years. And we'll go from there. I don't know what, what, what Max Muncy's contract status is. I think he's got another 13 million. He, yeah, he's a lot. 22 is his last year. Or there's a club option for 23. So I think Max Muncy is going to be here for the next two years. They're not worried about him. I think they'll just take that year by year. And they got to figure out if they're going to pay Cody or not. I think they'll do another arbitration year with Cody before figuring out the extent of that injury. But it looks like he's kind of getting out of that injury-related slump. A lot of decisions for the Dodgers. Yeah, fire clown. I mean, who do you replace... Dave Roberts with it's easy to say fire the guy and you know and, and I'm not I'm on the, I'm I'm you know it's not a hot take but I'm on the fence with Dave Roberts sometimes like I think he's acceptable sometimes I'm just like what the hell is he doing but I mean he's he's led the Dodgers to a number of World Series he's won one won the division a lot you know players like him You know, like, who do you, I mean, some players, some, some people will argue like, Hey, how many world series is did Dave Roberts cost us? If any of the four of the, in the last six years that the Dodgers have gone to, are you saying the Dodgers should have won all of them? Would they've won all of them if it were someone other than Dave Roberts? I don't know. Maybe. Jose Garcia. I, I guess I just don't know who else would you would you get. Some some argue that hey, you know, the front office is making all those decisions, right? But even if that was the case, it's not like Don Mattingly didn't have this didn't have the same success with my Dodgers that that Dave Roberts has. I don't know. Maybe the personnel was different. Everything was, just clicked. Replacement with Manny Ramirez. I mean. I, I would love that if this was like a movie about the hard luck Dodgers. You know, and then all of a sudden Manny Ramirez unveils the new manager of the Dodgers. It's kind of funny. Dave Roberts is complete bozo. If you can't see that, so are you. You calling me a bozo? Payday? Or just half a bozo? Uh, out of 49, there's Jorge Polanco and there's Mickey Moniak Silver. I don't know, maybe on the fence bozo. I don't know. I just, I'm, I, again, it's, this is not an exciting take, but I think I'm, I think some people, some people love him, some people, I'm just kind of in the middle. Guess, guess I'm the middle of the road bozo. There's Davy Garcia, Yankees. That's our final autograph there. 
Tristan McKenzie, Alec Baum, and that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Quick recap uh, here in full case, Mosaic Baseball Hobby Break number two, Picker Team 2. More Picker Teams in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I'll see you next time for the next break, which will be tomorrow. Oh, there's the Chris Bryant stained glass. These are fewer and far between. The short print right there. That's Kiebert Ruiz. And Chris Bubich let us off. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for Jaspies Case Breaks. Here, you're welcome, Joe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I will see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.